Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll have a look at a study which shows that NAD is required for bone mesenchyme and stem cells to differentiate into bone cells as opposed to fat cells. Given lower levels of NAD as we age, this may be a contributing factor to osteoporosis. Let's have a look at what they found. First a disclaimer that in this video we're sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Attenuates of NAD plus impair BMSC osteogenesis and fracture repair through OXFOS. Let's have a quick summary of the paper. Controlling whether bone marrow mesenchyme and stem cells or BMSCs favor bone cell formation over fat is considered a promising approach for bone regeneration and repair. There is evidence that oxidative phosphorylation is involved in regulating what form of differentiated cell the stem cell will become. And it seems that NAD, a cofactor used in OXFOS, is correlated with the differentiation, but the mechanism is not clear. So they investigated the impact of NAD on energy metabolism in deciding which type of cell the BMSC would become. What they found was that stem cells, which became bone cells, exhibited increased OXFOS activity and decreased glycolysis, along with an increased NAD level. In contrast, stem cells, which became fat cells, showed little change in the OXFOS activity, but an increase in glycolysis, and that reducing NAD led to less bone cell formation. This situation was rescued by supplementing with NMN. In the conclusion, they say that NAD-mediated mitochondrial oxphos is required for bone cell formation in bone repair and would provide a potential therapeutic target. There are a couple of things that I would like to explain from the abstract. The first is, what are mesenchyme and stem cells? These are multipotent stem cells which have the capability to become bone, fat, nerve, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, or cartilage. In this paper, they looked at the decision as to whether the cell becomes an osteoblast, which is a bone cell, or an adipocyte, which is a fat cell. When we need to form or repair bone, we want the stem cells to become bone cells. One related event is whether an MSC becomes a muscle cell or a fat cell. And what is oxidative phosphorylation or OXFOS? This is the last step in cellular respiration the process of burning glucose or fats to create ATP for energy. Very briefly, glucose is first divided into two in the cytoplasm of the cell through a process called glycolysis. This does not require oxygen and produces a little energy. The next two steps produce the bulk of the energy and take place in the mitochondria, which is why the mitochondria are called the powerhouse of the cell. The metabolites of glycolysis go into the mitochondria, where they are further metabolized in the Krebs cycle. This requires oxygen and creates high-energy electrons, which are attached to NAD and FAD, and so has a high requirement for NAD to function. These go on into the third phase, where they are passed down the electron transport chain, the outcome of which is the bulk of the energy in the form of ATP. This last step is called oxidative phosphorylation. Cells can get energy from glycolysis, but it is very inefficient in terms of the energy gained per glucose consumed. Looking at the results they saw, they looked at human stem cells in culture where they were induced to differentiate into either a bone cell or a fat cell. In the bone cells, here in red, they saw higher NAD and lower NADH, and so a higher NAD-NADH ratio than the fat cells in blue. And also higher NAMPT activity, where NAMPT is the enzyme which converts nicotinamide into NMN in the NAD salvage pathway and is the main source of NAD in the cell. They next looked at the impact of changing levels of NAD in the cells by either inhibiting or promoting NAMPT. This shows some stained images where the blue in the top line and the red in the bottom line are bone cells. EMSO is the neutral control. FK866 is a NAMPT inhibitor, which significantly lowered the number of bone cells. And P7C3 is a NAMPT promoter, where we can see more bone cells being formed. Above that, known is in the control, showing a correlation between NAD levels and bone formation. They then looked at how respiration was impacted by FK866. 
where respiration in the cell is part of the oxfos process. They saw that both the basal and the spare respiration were reduced, where the spare respiration is the difference between the basal and the maximum. They suspected that this lower respiration was caused by oxfos not being able to work without the NAD. So they then looked at whether supplementing with NMN would increase the NAD and rescue the bone regeneration. FK866 reduced the bone formation as expected. Adding NMN partly reversed this. However, NMN on its own did not impact the result. So they looked at the metabolic profile during differentiation into bone or fat cells of BSMCs and identified NAD as a regulator via OxFOS. If the NAD was reduced with FK866, this stopped the bone cell formation. Further experiments would be needed to look at the potential of NAD and its precursors in supporting bone generation and repair. For me, the takeaway was that NAD is required for the generation of bone cells from mesenchyme and stem cells. As stem cell exhaustion and lower NAD levels are both symptoms of aging, this could contribute to osteoporosis. Searching on the web, I find that it might also impact muscle cells in a similar way and contribute to sarcopenia. So another great reason to keep NAD levels up. <music>